Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ. And looking at some of the leaders in our conference so far, stat wise, so we actually have a big matchup coming up this week versus Houston. And speaking of Houston, Kyle Allen is right behind Cohen for the lead in total passing yards. And believe it or not, Cohen is actually the second highest uh, passer in the whole NCAA right now. He's second in the NCAA with 1948 uh, through these first uh, seven games. I believe it's been seven games. Uh, but if you look at this, look at the rest. Wimbush, wow. Wimbush is 24 almost 2400 i mean he is killing and allen is actually third and he's right behind us so i mean if you look at our matchup here this is a very very important matchup because we're going up against a houston team who's in our division one and two i mean they're two and one in conference so if they beat us i mean they're kind of in the driver's seat as far as our division and we have to you know wait on them to lose pretty much i mean they have the head-to-head -head battle versus us but they do have a tough schedule coming up a little bit. I mean, they have SMU, uh, but they're at home versus SMU. Then they have Cincinnati. Cincinnati's 2-5, and five, but they're actually 2-1 and one in conference. And that might be just a fluke. They did beat Middle Tennessee State. Uh, they got blown out by Ohio State. But they beat USF, too, who we just beat. And they seem like a pretty tough... You know, they had a bad game versus us, but they I, I feel like they had a decent defense, good enough to win. But, I mean, Houston's definitely the top of our whole conference at least in our division if we look at the other the other side of the division army look at army they're six and one four and oh in conference they are on a win streak i mean they are streaking right now they actually beat houston so they beat houston by four points man who they blow out by that much temple they beat temple 49 to 16 so on that side of the division it looks like army is just taking care of business i don't know if anybody's really going to catch them when it's all said and done but on our side we have three teams it's really a two-team race i mean cincinnati they're two and five i don't see them keeping up that winning ways but i mean houston i mean it's definitely going to be a tough matchup especially since they throw the ball all they do is throw the ball and you know how hard it is to defend the pass especially with how bad our team is so let's just take a look at recruiting before hopping into this big matchup versus houston so if you look at the top of our recruiting board it's definitely changed a lot so there's definitely some recruits i want to introduce you guys to john waters was a guy you guys probably seen a couple episodes ago He's a guy that plays some man coverage, zone coverage. He has decent running skills as well. He looks like, he actually looks like kind of a running back. I mean, he looks like he can play both ways. So this might be a guy we can play both ways. Paul Miller is actually a Juco athlete we found. Look at him. He is beastie. 96 speed, 95 excel. He's got 82 play rec, man coverage in the 80s and zone in the 80s. So, I mean, this guy looks like a guy that played both ways too because look at his offensive skills. He's got 85 carrying, 87 elusiveness. Maybe he's another weapon I can use on offense. Maybe I can use him as like a slot receiver or a, maybe a H back, a guy that can just get handoffs. And if we look at the rest of our guys, uh, we're just going to go down the line here. Trey Jefferson, we're actually behind by a thousand with him. So, uh, I mean, it's kind of it kind of sucks because look at what team he wants to go to. Of course, Army. So, I mean, they're dominating the division. They're dominating us in recruiting. Curtis Ross, another athlete who we wanted to get. Look, we're in second place with him. Nobody wants to come to our school. But Robert Minnick, this is a, one of our top corners. Uh, he also wants to come. If you look at his stats, Hunter Greggs is another guy that we're really hoping for. Uh, his visit is coming up. Um, I do have a perk to get a some bonus points uh during the visit so hopefully we do end up squeaking past umass dylan mack another defensive end i found 82 speed he's got decent block shed ron sands we definitely need a linebacker he's good as well 92 acceleration 81 speed and he's got pretty decent zone and man i mean they're in the 70s that's usually unheard of for middle linebackers but we're just now starting out getting him so uh, we'll see how that ends up. Uh, Willie Payne, a guard. Todd Williams, a decent uh, defensive end. He's all right. Uh, Albert Vick is a quarterback we have, but we do have Sullivan Sully uh, that's redshirted as well. So going down the line, if you look at some of these recruits, you're going to notice that some of these are the, some of the custom recruits. I just fell behind in a lot of them. And the reason why I have no points on them is because once I got to like t behind 2,000, at, at one point I was behind, behind 2,000 on some of these guys. Uh, I just let them go pretty much. I just let them go. So there's these receivers that I have I can probably move them up and put some points on them 
but I mean besides that I mean if you look at the bottom here middle linebacker Chris Morris is probably gonna round out uh, our bottom half here he has decent finesse moves so maybe a guy that I could put some points on red shirt see what he can do in the future but I mean if you look at our recruits here Jamel Jones actually committed so he's gonna be a Marquette Golden Eagle but Kilgore is gonna be a Golden Eagle as well he's a really really good run blocking guard and then we have Curtis Jones a defensive tackle so I mean at least we're off to a good start uh, shoring up both our offensive and defensive line we definitely need some depth there we definitely need some help so I mean honestly I mean I need to add a, a linebacker I need to get a few linebackers so man since we're losing Trey Jefferson I, I really had to go after some of these guys I mean Ron Sands is on here but I mean I don't have many options right now so I'm gonna add a couple more recruits to the board but let's get into this game, man. This is a big game going up against Houston. We know they run the air raid, so let's get into it. Let's go. Big game. I mean, this is a big game. So we really need to show our offense in this game just because, I mean, they have Kyle Allen on the opposite side, and he's going to be, I mean, geared to play. This is a big conference game for them as well as us. So here we go. Starting this game off, getting Alex Brown involved in the running game and that's something that I've been trying to do I've been trying to actually give him less carries because I don't want to risk him getting hurt because remember last year all my quarterbacks kept getting hurt because I kept taking hits I want to kind of avoid that with Alex Brown but he's just too big of a dynamic playmaker to just allow him to you know get a lot of shortage of carries but right away I mean the first drive of the game Alex Brown a couple of big carries and it's an easy first drive. I mean, the defense just wasn't there, but our defense has a tall task. Kyle Allen is on the other side. He's a senior, so he knows how to win up to this point. So here that offense goes. They have Catalan, Duke Catalan, what a name that is, in the backfield. And right off the bat, they're doing a couple of uh, option plays, a couple of read options, some of speed options, and they're doing stuff that we didn't think they could even do. But here we are gotcha, getting bitch. Kyle Allen on the sack. They're finally starting to throw the ball, and on the first play, we, we sack him by Javon Pennington. And on the, on the next play, second and 14, he's finding his tight end, Brooker, across the 50-yard line. So Kyle Allen doing a little bit of everything right here. Running the option, finding Lark open across the field on the double slant route on the outside. So second and five inside the 15-yard line, giving it to Duke Catalan. Catalan gets open to the outside, but we do stop him short of the first down. So third and one, they're attempting another option, and Lewis Parker gets in for the tackle on Catalan. And right away in this game, we come up with a small win, get them to settle for the field goal on their first possession. But studio update, look at this. USF upsets Army. So this is actually the other side of the bracket. We thought Army was going to have a clear path to go undefeated, but that's not the case. They're showing a little vulnerability. And back to the action, Marquette gets the ball after a good return by Chad Ball close to the 50-yard line, getting it to him once more on the third and three curl route for a 20-yard reception that time. So Cohen actually on a bit of a hot streak. <laughs> ben Miller getting hit hard that time. So now facing a second and four inside the 15-yard line, finding Ben Miller one more time close to the five-yard line. So Ashton Cohen is showing some accuracy. He's actually showing some chemistry, and that's the thing. I knew it would take a few games for Ashton Cohen to get going, but now he is finally finding his teammates, throwing the ball accurately on time but we do have to settle for the field goal. So now we're at the start of the second quarter. Kyle Allen comes back out with this defense. Duke Catalan takes a, takes a handoff, makes a cut, gets past the 50-yard line on the 34-yard rush that time, and they're showing that. You know, the scouting report on us is that we give up a lot of rushing yards. And here's Kyle Allen rolling out to the right one more time for the nice nine-yard gain. That time he almost got up and started running again. So now they're facing a third and three close to the 20-yard line. And they run the option one more time. And this is a this is what I wasn't expecting, though. I wasn't expecting them to run the ball a lot. And I'm out in the 4-2-5 quite a bit. Oh, wow, and Cohen takes a stiff arm. But like I was saying, I'm out in a 4-2-5 quite a bit because I'm expecting them to throw the ball because a lot of times when a team runs the ball, gotcha, I run the 3-4 solid, and that's a good uh, defense for the run. But I'm running the 4-2-5 a lot. So here in the third and seven, they're getting it to Duke Catalan one more time, almost breaking the tackle. But we do get them to face a fourth and three, and they do settle for another 
field goal. So it is a 10-6 game towards the mid part of the second quarter. And we're going to come out on this next drive looking to establish this run. We're having some success running the ball. And here Alex Brown making a move on two defenders and getting close to the 40 five yard line almost at the 50 and he's got 80 yards already in the early parts of this game so cohen drops back did you guys see that lineman just run all the way past look at this again i mean <laughs> he kind of like glitches goes to the line look at that he gets a little speed burst but he doesn't even go after cohen i don't know Bruh. where he's going he keeps running <laughs> I don't even know what's going on with the game at that point. So here, three minutes left in this uh, half here. And on the fourth and inches, we give it to Glenn Hall. I always pretty much go for it on the fourth and inches because, I mean, unless I'm in, like, on the 20-yard line in my own territory, that's the only time I'll really punt. But, I mean, this is a big game here. We're going up against Houston, probably the best team in our uh, division in the conference. So we definitely need to make a statement here. And Ben Miller getting the first down on the 13-yard uh, gain that time. And here, Alex Brown trips over a lineman, almost had a clear path to the end zone on that one. But Cohen on the second and five has a pretty good amount of time to throw the ball, which is kind of rare to sit back in the pocket and have that much time. He finds Eddie McCray for the first down. So on a second and goal, Glenn Hall gets in to spell Alex Brown. and gets in for the touchdown. So that is a 17-6 lead before the half ends. But Houston, you know they can air the ball out, so they're going to try to put some points on the board. But gotcha, Kyle bitch. Allen is swallowed up by this defense on that sack by Lewis Parker. And Lewis Parker... I mean, believe it or not, he's actually top five in sacks in the nation. I mean, he's been doing really well the last couple games, and it's really helped him get some national attention. So here on a first and 10, they do start the second half out with the ball. So Kyle Allen looking to establish a run, and on a broken, that looked like a broken jet sweep play. Kyle Allen still rushes for eight yards, and I didn't think he can run the ball, but he's doing a pretty good job. He has some pretty good vision running the ball. But on a second and seven, attempt to throw a screen pass. And Julius Macklin is there for his first interception of this season. The red shirt freshman comes up with the pick, and that's going to set us up with pretty good field position to start this next drive. So on a second and 13, Cohen rolling out to the right. Cannot escape the defensive end on that one, getting sacked for nine-yard loss. And on a third and 21, trying to, you know, get some yardage back. But look who's wide open. Chad ball gets wide open that was a busted coverage for sure that time by Houston and Chad ball just walks into the end zone I don't think I mean you can't mess that up look, look at Alex Brown Alex Brown's even open deep and look at the safety probably went with Alex Brown because he knows he has that speed he's a guy you always have to look after but he forgets about Chad ball so on the next possession Duke Catalan getting the ball getting a nice 20 yard rush Past the 50-yard line, and Kyle Allen looking to make up for that last drive and almost throws a second pick on a similar screen pass. Julius Macklin almost comes up with his second one of the game. So on a third and seven, attempting to run a screen play, and Duke Catalan cannot escape Vince Cohen on the tackle that time, and Vince Cohen is just getting better and better at tackling. Remember, within the first couple games of the season, he could not make any tackle, but now he's coming up with these big clutch tackles, and Alex Brown back on offense gets a nice swing pass he's always good for one of those a game a nice swing pass for a nice yard nice like 20 yard game and that one goes for 17 so here is cohen back out on offense and i mean our receivers are just getting open on these houston corners and what a move that time by herman rogers who often gets lost in the offense but he he's a great fourth receiver to have because I run a hurry up, so a lot of these guys always get in, especially when Chad Ball gets tired because, remember, he's a returner, so he's out a lot in the game. And, I mean, a guy, once again, Eddie McCray, who had, who was actually our leading receiver last year, he's been lost in the offense a little bit, but it's because Alex Brown kind of takes a lot of the <laughs> – pressure off everybody else and Alex Brown makes a couple of moves and gets in for the 20 yard touchdown run and what a juke move he puts on the safety that time look at that and then he puts on the nice spin move on the safety breaks another tackle on the corner and gets in for the end zone and even that he's still falling forward falls into the end zone and Alex Brown can he be stopped I mean he might be the best offensive player I've ever had and he is a freshman but back on defense that. 
We are just suffocating Kyle Allen. And look at this, man. Another turnover by this Marquette defense. But look who it is. It's Lewis Parker who is showing up. I mean, he is obviously our MVP. He forces the fumble. Uh, he's definitely our defensive MVP. But, I mean, it's so good to have this recruiting class because Lewis Parker comes up with so many plays on defense. It seems like he's been getting better and better, and the chemistry is just there right now. Putting Anthony Jetter on defense has definitely helped. And once again, another new face to this Marquette team this second season. Ben Miller, the true freshman, he's just big. You can't tackle him. So now it is a 38-6 lead. Who saw this coming? Kyle Allen is just flustered. Look at that. The pressure is getting to him. He's throwing the ball away. And on a third and 10, Vince Cohen comes up with the interception. Kyle Allen thought he had a wide open guy. He should have lobbed that one. Instead, he throws a bullet in another interception by this Marquette defense. The third turnover of the game for the Houston offense and this Marquette defense is just feasting at this point so it is 38 to 6 so I actually sub out my stars because I'm not risking any type of injury so now our old quarterback Donnie Wolf is in at quarterback and finds Conrad Malone who's like our seven stream receiver but on a first and goal Donnie Wolf gets another touchdown run and it is 45 to 6 here in this game and Kyle Allen still in the game. They're just trying to save face. But look, nothing is going right for them. He trips over his running back. Look at this again. He trips over his running back. And this game is just not going well for this Houston offense. So on a third and four team, getting it to Duke Catalan one more time. And Julius Macklin playing a little safety is there for the tackle. And they force, and we force another punt. So we get the ball back on offense. 15 seconds left in this game. And look, I'm just trying to hit 50 at this point. No sportsmanship for Heisman. And I'm telling you, this was a dominant game from start to finish. And here we go 51 points put up on this Houston defense. And look at Kyle Allen. He actually throws three picks. There's actually a. A uh, garbage time pick that he threw later that I didn't show. But, I mean, this was straight-up domination. I don't expect this to happen quite often, but the Marquette defense just completely balls out, shuts Houston out in the second half, and it's just a uh, shellacking. I mean, Lewis Parker dominates. I mean, look at him. He's got eight tackles, two sacks. Julius Macklin shows up. He gets a pick, almost two. I mean, what a great game all around. Ashton Cohen is forming into his own, so we have a path to go to the conference championship if we just continue to win. I mean, we just got to stay ahead in these games, keep doing what we do. So hit subscribe, hit that like button. We'll be back for the next episode. But what a great win. Huge win over a tough Houston team. So we're looking to carry this on. So let's go.